10 bad habits that Christians should desist from. 1. Constant lateness to church. Lateness is a terrible bad behavior that a true Christian should avoid. Most Christians are fond of coming to the house of God late or church meetings late. This attitude or habit proves that your love for God and the things of the kingdom has grown cold. So as a Christian, wake up and avoid coming to service late as there are lots of blessings attached to people who are early to the house of God. 2. Rejection of sitting position. This is an aspect that most Christians fall victim to. Once you come into the house of God, and the usher of that, the church gives you a sitting position, happily accept it with joy and sit, stopping making position or choice for yourself, as it is a sign of pride. Remember no pride in the house of God. Once you are in the house of God, everyone is the same. We are equal in the sight of God. 3. Always going outside to answer calls. Once you are in the presence of God, avoid every distraction and switch off your phones. Avoid always running out to pick up calls with your phone ringing out so loud. This alone distracts any activity going on at that moment, so always be mindful of such distractions. Receiving calls during church service proves where your heart is, your values and your priorities are. 4. Sleeping during sermon. This is another aspect mostly found among Christians. Most people sleep off once it's time for a sermon. And they go home not getting any information from the sermon of that day. 5. Chatting or playing games with phone during church service. This is another bad behavior spotted among most Christians in church. They are distracted with their cell phones chatting or playing games in the house of God during service or sermons. Which shows they are not spiritual. 6. Leaving church before closure. You are not fully blessed if you leave the house of God without the final closing prayer. This also causes distraction and makes others who choose to stay till the end of service feel like they don't know what to do with their time. 7. Condemning certain sins, while making light of others. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the beam in your eye? Matthew chapter 7 verse 3 NIV. Sin is sin. We are instructed to hate sin and to do all we can to avoid it. Sometimes. We may find through our insecurities that we notice the downfalls of others. Remember that each of us has our downfalls and shortcomings. Each of us has a story to tell and a cross to bear. Let's encourage one another on our journey to heaven, rather than push one another below the waves of worldliness. 8. Casually using the word, intentional. Remember that we want to be men and women of our word. If we truly wish to be intentional, we must have the intent to devote all our time and attention to our neighbors and the Lord. Create goals and stick to them. Find a friend or family member who can hold you accountable. But do not claim to be intentional while not taking the steps to truly do so. Truly intentional living will take not just intentions, but following through with actions. 9. High pressure dating. This tends to be a common misconception among Christian communities. Just because you go on dates to get to know someone of the opposite sex, does not mean you've won the golden ticket to marry them. Going on dates simply allows two people to learn more about one another and enjoy the company of one another. Accept the time together at face value. Plus, marriage talks on the first date have been known to scare people. Relax the pressure on Christian singles. Not every date will lead down the aisle. 10. Complaining about the worship service. Praise him with the sounding of a trumpet, praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing, Psalm chapter 150 verse 34. It does not matter if we pray silently through fervent prayer or a rock band concert. Each of us has unique gifts to communicate with our Lord and with others for his kingdom. Let's thank the Lord we can worship in so many ways. If the worship service does not impress you, what can you do to help? What a wonderful way to get involved in your church. 11. Segregating Sunday. When was the last time you went to a church service where the congregation looked different than you? Sounded different than you? or worshipped in a different way than what you are used to. We tend to go to churches with communities that aesthetically please us. However, there is so much to learn from those who don't share our same race, denomination, and socioeconomic status. Have you tried exploring the various Christian communities outside your own? If not, this may be a great time to start. You'll be surprised at what you can learn from Christians outside of your regular circle. 12. Excluding non-Christians. How can we ever bring our brothers and sisters back to Christ if we are too busy pushing them away? Remember the friends that Jesus kept, the sinners and tax collectors. His audience was marginalized. Even in today's society, where religion falls farther and farther to the wayside, 
we must at least provide our neighbors with the invitation to follow Christ. 13. Excluding the searching Christians. Some of us are more along in our faith than others. But that does not mean that our brothers and sisters who are, spiritual babies, are a lost cause. Remember to witness to those striving for a Christ-like life through your example. When you demonstrate a positive and consistent Christian lifestyle for your brothers and sisters in Christ, you can help them further their faith journey and develop a stronger personal relationship with Jesus. 14. Putting Jesus in a political party. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined. And every city or household divided against itself will not stand. Matthew chapter 12 verse 25 NIV. We live in such polarized times with no shortage of conflict. After all, as Peter writes, love covers a multitude of sins. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 8 NIV. 15. Ignoring the poor. It is very easy to share a viral video of someone making a difference for those who have much less than us. However, how often do we stop to hear the stories, pray, and help those in need within our communities? This is one area in which a little really can go a long way, and as we are promised. Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Matt. 25 to 40 NIV. Which point do you agree or disagree with? Please leave a comment below. Thank you for watching, please like and subscribe to our channel to receive our next educative videos.